What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, hope you're all doing well. I was gonna go for a ride today and enjoy the wonderful Wisconsin weather we were having a week ago and then we got seven inches of snow so we're back inside. But uh, that leaves us with a perfect opportunity to go over all the mods that I have on my 2013 BMW R1200GS today. So let's get right into it. So right here, our first mod, we have the Bosco Moto tank bag, which is a seven liter tank bag. This is the Bosco Moto Nomad. They're now the Nomax because they ran into a trademark issue, but this is the Nomad. So they don't make it anymore, but that's the first item coming in at $300. It's a great little, Thing if you need more storage. It's got all kinds of compartments and flaps, got all kinds of holders. It's got this nice waterproof map pouch and it's got this thing they call a little beaver tail for all this quick access stuff. You know, great to have storage right here, easily accessible. So that's our first mod coming in at $300. Our next mod is right here, the Windrider seat cover. This is a $160 on their website, which is pretty steep. They're commonly on sale for $80 and on my dad's bike he has one that's a $20 Chinese one. Same exact thing. It works great. So you know go buy the $20 one but we're gonna keep the highest price in this video in case for whatever reason you can't find it on sale or don't want the Chinese one. So it's going on the list is $160. This is great. It adds some cushion and it makes the seat feel great. Uh, I rode this in a downpour and the rain just flows right through there and off the bike, out of your seat. So that's great. You never get a wet butt with this. You get all kinds of airflow so you don't get a hot butt in the summer. Honestly, a great mod. Would totally recommend, but go buy the $20 Chinese one. And right here, we have the Alt-Rider headlight cover coming in at $185. These things are also rather expensive. You know, this just pops out of here if you ever need to change it and then pops right back in with some force, obviously. Honestly, if you wanna protect your headlight, pretty worth it because these headlights are thousands of dollars, lots of technology in there, so. Uh, Less than $200 headlight protector is great for that. They did make these in silver, which they also discontinued. Uh, the silver ones were cheaper and you can kind of find them on the aftermarket. This is the black one, $185. This is my dad's GS. You can see here's like the silver. Uh, you know, that's what the silver looks like. A little bit cheaper back when they made them. Don't make them anymore. Right here is probably what has to be one of my favorite mods on this bike. It's a GSA windshield. This is a standard GS. If you've ever seen the standard windshield for these bikes, they are tiny. So awesome that it's a BMW part, um, but it's the GS windshield. So the normal GS, significantly taller. This is it in the low position. And then it's obviously also adjustable. Make it pretty tall there. Great mod, works great, looks super slick. That comes in from BMW at $335. Valued at priceless. And right here, coming in at $175 is a Rock Fox skid plate. This is probably a company you've never heard of because it is a small company based out of South Africa that only made BMW parts for a while. And now they've expanded to other branches, but uh, honestly pretty cheap for a skid plate and it's extremely high quality. Kind of hard to find since, you know, you'll find your Wonderlutch and your Tour Tech, but this company isn't so heard of. But it's a great deal for the money you're paying. And as long as we're down here, we can talk about these meaty beefy boys. These are the TourTech crash bars for the BMW GS. These are the most expensive item on the list, with good reason, protecting the engine that keeps this bike running, coming in at $470 for steel tubing that protects your engine. You need crash bars on an adventure bike, so what are you gonna do? They've been great, haven't personally crash tested them, but 
I'm sure that will work fine. TourTech's a great company and they have my support. The next item on the list is under these. We will be coming back to these. It's these little leather pads on top of these side bags. This little sticker you stick on there, it's got this leather-like texture. Uh, I'm not sure where they're from. You can buy them anywhere, Timu or wherever. You know, they're like eight bucks. So we're gonna put those down as eight dollars. Not sure where they're from. I didn't buy them. They were on the, they were put on by the previous owner of this bike. Uh, it's a cheap item. Protects the top of your case a little bit. Eight bucks. Another amazing item right here are the SW Motec Ion Footrests, coming in at a hundred and fifty dollars. These ended up lowering the foot pegs, uh, just, you know, enough. I couldn't give you an exact measurement. This bike did not come with the stock foot pegs. My dad's bike did, I didn't measure them. So sorry for, uh, you know, no measurements here. But these I loved because my dad's bike coming with the stock foot pegs made shifting this bike almost impossible. The shifter was about there. I could not get my foot under that thing to save my life and was missing shifts constantly and it drove me nuts. As soon as we bought this bike, I was like, I have no problem shifting this bike. It is great, everything works. Cause these lowered it. So instead of the shifter being like right there, it was more like up here and I could actually get my boot under the shift lever to actually shift. So that, you know, the rider triangle also, it extends your legs out a little bit, gives you a little bit more leg room allows you to actually shift the bike and get your boot under there. You know, unless you're wearing like flip flops, I could not get my foot under there. Great item right there, $150. This one's a little tricky to film since it's on the other side of the bike, but right there we have the Wonderlutch side stand enlarger coming in at $80. Just makes the side stand a little bit larger there in case you ever want to put the bike down in mud, sand, gravel, anything like that. I would highly recommend one of those. Wonderlutch, again, great company. They make all kinds of BMW stuff, super top-notch quality. Great item right there. You can probably find some cheaper Chinese ones. I know my dad did, but they did not fit the side stand. He had to end up cutting it out and spending a whole bunch of time. So trying to save money there, kind of maybe screwed him over on time a little bit. These are different depending if you have the low suspension or the normal suspension. So just be mindful of that. Great item, $80. Right here, we have the Rocks, specifically for the GS. They're called the Rocks GS Handlebar Risers. These come in at $140, bringing the handlebars one and a quarter inches up and one inch back. Along with these, the brake line then is too short, so you need to buy a brake line extender right here. $30. This one right here is a Voigt Moto Technic brake line extender, $30. You know, just something you need to pair with those handlebar extenders. Another great item, the stock bars on this bike kind of feel like a sport bike almost. You're really leaned over. The bars are like right on the triple tree there. So it's just great, comfortable, lets you lean back a little bit more like a cruiser when you get these. Obviously, if you're standing up when riding in the dirt, they raise the bars up. Just another great item. Those two items paired together, which you need to pair them together, $170. The next mod is right here. These are the stock handguards, and these on top are TourTech handguard extenders. These can be found on eBay for around $50, and that's because they don't make them anymore. TourTech has updated these since these have been bought, and they're now $90 for these. So we're doing all the prices in this video at current market price for whatever product is available and is most similar, leaving these at $90. Another great mod since the stock ones are rather short and these just bring it up a little bit, give your hands a little bit more wind protection. This little extender piece right here is a front fender extender. They are $20 from China. If you want the official like name brand one, it's Machine Art Moto, and those are $80. I have one of those on my R1200 RT, and this is a $20 China one that I have on my GS, and it works just as well. 
This is another one of those things that I would skimp out on, get the Chinese one, it's cheaper, does the same thing, $20 instead of $80. There's no drilling required, it just, there's a bolt and it presses onto the back fender there, works well. Keeps all the mud and debris off the front of the engine case there, so that's that, $20. This black plastic piece right here is a TourTech beak extender, that's what they call it. $190 for this little piece of plastic that you have to drill into your front fender or beak, whatever they call this. What does it do? Supposedly it routes air into the headlight. That keeps this cool, which keeps your headlight running. Does it actually do that? Maybe. Will your headlight keep running without it? Absolutely. BMW did not need this part. It also supposedly keeps extra mud from coming off your front wheel and in your face. There's like two inches of plastic here. I don't think this does much. I think it looks cool. I didn't buy it. It's almost $200 and I think this is a ridiculous part. My dad was gonna get one, I told him not to. Maybe it does something. If it does, if you have one of these and it does, let me know in the comments below. I don't know, it looks cool I guess. If you look right here, you'll notice my GS does not look like most GS's. Not only because of all the extreme mods I have all over this bike, the thousands of dollars of mods that this bike has, this bike doesn't have a rear seat. I do have the rear seat, it came with a rear seat. We put a metal plate on here that we bought off the internet, $45, pretty good deal for this plate. There are some cheaper ones. They don't have all the supports that this one does. We got it off Timu. There's one that you can tell the supports look way better. Buy that one, it's $45. We're using this as a storage area for when we go to Dead Horse Alaska. If you're unsure about that, I've talked about that in travel vlogs that I could probably link here. Subscribe to the channel and follow along if you want to see me go to Dead Horse Alaska on this bike. I will be using that plate on the adventure. I will need it there. We are going to put gas cans here because 500 miles with one gas stop in the middle means we're probably going to need gas on a gas can on this plate. Even if we don't need it, it's good to have it. Um, so I'm gonna be putting a two and a half gallon gas can here along with something else. I don't know what, you know, extra space. I need the space here more than I need a rear seat. So this nice chunk of metal, $45. Great, great mod for this bike. Also, if you look even closer, there's these little hooks, nuts, washers, and bolts. My dad put those in there, along with some fasteners for the highway pegs that I put on this bike. I'm just gonna say those are around $10. We just, you know, that was stuff we kinda had laying around the house, or you can get it at any hardware store for relatively cheap. You know, just gonna use this as tie downs to hold the gas cans down without actually having to go into this plate. Just a little bit nicer to put a hook inside that loop instead. So all the fasteners for that and the highway pegs, I'm gonna say $10. Back to those bags we mentioned earlier. These are side case top bags. I got them off AliExpress. $30 for both of them. I think they're both 20 liters, giving me an additional 40 liters in space. They unzip and then you can expand them out pretty tall. You know, lots of space in here. They come with a rain fly. They come with straps to go around the bag if you don't have the clamps that go on these aluminum cases. If you have the, the BMW Vario cases, you'll need to buy a little plate that adds these or you can add them or otherwise it comes with a strap that goes all the way around the bag. I was fortunate enough to have the aluminum cases with these nice little things and there's a strap that just goes in there and velcros right in there. They mount up super nice. These are really expensive if you buy them on Amazon for whatever reason. I think they're like a hundred dollars for the same exact thing. So go buy them off AliExpress, Timu, whatever. Those aren't great companies, but for $70 in savings, I can live with it. You know, just another great area to add a little bit more storage to this bike for when I'm gone for three weeks and I need extra clothing. $30. Another cheap Chinese thing I put on this bike were frame plugs. I think this one's stock, but like there's this one, they're all over the bike. So, you know, they're just, they're, this is one that I'm pretty sure is factory. 
You can get the same exact ones from China that fill in all the other holes that BMW didn't fill. You know, there's exceptions like this, that needs to be available, so it didn't come with a plug for that. But all the other ones are plugged, you know, just keep sand and debris out of all those spots in your frame, salt, whatever, five bucks. Right here on the air intake on this bike, I put some Chinese air intake grills here just to protect from rocks or whatever else might get in there. I wasn't too worried about that, but the GSAs have these and I think they look cool. That's kind of the primary reason I got them. They just make the bike look more utilitarian. $10, pretty cheap. More of a cosmetic mod than a functional mod here, so not the most valuable thing, but I think they look cool. They might be kind of hard to see, so I might put some B-roll in here because it's kind of dark in here. I'm gonna look on my phone here for the list I have for this because I wanna make sure I pronounce this right. It is a Tapazaria Italia custom seat. It's under this Wind Rider cover, $265. Very cheap if you've looked into what replacement seats cost for motorcycles, $265 a steel. Normally they're like $1,200. I have some $1,200 seats. They're super nice. This one I don't think did much. I mean, that being said, I have the Windrider cover, but back when I did have the rear seat on this bike, I sat on it. It was a pretty hard seat. I think it was harder than the stock seat. So if you like that, maybe then go for that. I don't think it added much. It was a gray with red stitching on it. They don't make that color anymore. They have all kinds of other different colors. If you want blue or yellow or red or white, black, they've got everything, whole bunch of options. I think that's more of a cosmetic thing than a functional thing. I don't think the seat was any comfier. I mean, even if you like firm seats, I think maybe it was a, would be a little bit comfier. The stock seat on this bike's pretty squishy. It's, that seat is under here still. Seems fine, I guess. I took the back seat off, obviously. So you can't even really see that seat. There's no cosmetic value. So while it's essentially non-functional, it's still a mod done to this bike. So I thought I'd keep it on the list. $265. Kind of hard to see this, but if you look at the throttle right here, I have grab on grip covers, just like foam puppies, if you've heard of those. Just a foam cover that goes on the grip right there. Makes them a little bit larger, a little bit comfier to hold. Those are $15. You can kind of get these anywhere. I don't know. They're These aren't anything special. If you can find them cheaper, go for it. But $15 for these. Let's keep moving on. All right, stick with me here. We're almost to the end. Uh, this is going to be shot freehand along with a few other things just because it's a weird place, hard angle. But right there, you can see this phone charger. It reads out the battery voltage currently sitting at 11.9 volts. That is a DIN Gila plug to USB-A chargers. That is an Amazon special, I think. Something just from Amazon, 20 bucks. You have two USB-A ports there. Just a nice little plug-in, tells you your battery voltage, lets you charge your phone. You know it's cold when you can see it right there. The snowflake is on the dash of this bike. I've only had that come on a couple times and it's when there's been snow on the ground because there is, it's cold right now. All right, next up we have this phone holder here. This is a Tech Mount Tech Gripper Handlebar Mount Kit. Just holds your phone, you know, you can extend it out there and you can turn this whatever way you want it to hold your phone. It rotates, swivels, everything. Just an average phone mount, $50. Every time I've used it, holds my phone. I don't know if I fully trust it. I have a RAM mount on some of my other bikes. I think those are way better. They seem to secure the phone way better, but that is a tech mount, tech gripper, $50. I'm gonna use my phone to shine some lighting in here because we are talking about the radiator guards for this mod. I initially forgot about these. I was creating the list and all the prices when I was away from the bike. And then I recognized that these were on there. So these are kind of cool. They say G and S, you know, for the GS. Cool little thing there. These I did not put on the bike. I think they're another Amazon special type part. From what I found on the internet, they are the XX motorcycle radiator guards from Amazon, $30. Just your average Chinese radiator guard. They seem to do a good job. It's kind of cool that they say G and S on them. So adds a little stylistic touch, $30.
And the last mod on this bike is something I think BMW owners would probably hate on me for. Highway pegs. And not only are they highway pegs, they are Harley Davidson highway pegs. Kenny, if you're watching this, thank you. You know who you are. These were free to me for now. He gifted them to me to use on the trip. My dad made some mounting hardware because they didn't totally want to fit on there right the first time. So they fold up, fold down. Just some great highway pegs to put your feet up on on the highway. And they're from Harley Davidson. So a little bit of clashing culture there. But that's the last mod. That's everything. So now let's get to the exciting part. The part you've all been waiting for. If you've watched this far in the video, thank you. You are a super fan. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. I thank you for watching all the way through, and let's get into the total. Drum roll, please. All of the mods, all of the mods that I provided throughout this video come to a grand total of $2,810. Yes, $2,800. Almost $3,000 in mods on this motorcycle. Are they worth it? We can find out after my trip to Alaska what worked well, what didn't work well, what are the things I really wanted. I can make a separate video on that after my trip. I will tell you what fell apart. I will tell you what I wanted, what I wanted out of my way, what I wanted with me. Anything else I would change, I'll keep you informed on all of that. Almost $3,000 in mods. This bike should be completely optioned. Some of you out there might be thinking, this is absolutely insane. These motorcycles are $30,000 new today, and you're putting $3,000 in mods on them? Shouldn't they come perfect? I agree with you. Yes, they should. But it's a GS. I love keeping my bike stock, and I did not buy any of these mods. In fact, I totaled up all the mods I put on this bike, and they came to a grand total of $100. I have $100 in mods on this motorcycle and the mods that I put on this motorcycle and bought with my own money and did not come with the bike include this plate, which you know most people wouldn't need, but I want a gas can back here when we go to Alaska. So that was that $45. These bags for the $30 to go on top of these, just an extra closed storage for on the trip in case I need more storage there. And then obviously like the hooks and highway pegs, I said that was $10. You know, that's just common hardware stuff. and. Thanks again, Kenny, for the, the highway pegs. It means a lot. And then, yeah, the last thing I put on this bike was the front fender extender. I have that on all my liquid-cooled BMWs. You know, just keeps mud and debris off the front engine case there. Super nice, really cheap, not bad. So, yeah, I think now that I've included the fasteners and highway pegs, I think that brings the total to $105. So, yeah, nothing compared to the $2,800 in mods that's on this bike. That means I paid for less than 1 28th of the mods on this bike. I keep my motorcycle stock. I don't like paying for mods. I don't like the way mods look usually. This bike came with all the mods. I needed the mods on this bike. I'm going on a long trip all the way to Alaska, 500 miles of dirt road, and I want to be as comfortable as possible. I want to be as prepared as possible. I want to have places to put gas cans. I want to make sure I have enough storage. I want to make sure I can grab whatever I want and have the best wind protection. And I want to make sure my phone's charged. I want to make sure I'm comfortable. And if I drop the bike that it's protected and that I can shift properly. I am glad everything is on this bike. And I am glad I didn't have to pay for any of it. My dad wasn't as lucky. He had to pay for a lot of his mods. So if you want to see a video of all the mods he put on his bike and a grand total of those and let me know in the comments below. I am thoroughly pleased with this bike. I love all the mods on here. I think it looks cool. It looks super utilitarian. And I'm just happy with the bike I got. And I'm happy that the guy I bought this bike from paid for everything and just gave it all to me. Not only that, he gave me jackets, like riding gear, he was gonna give me boots, but they didn't fit. He gave me tools, he gave me boxes of tools and charger, he gave me everything. This guy got probably, you know, almost $3,000 in mods. There's probably another $1,000 in tools and accessories he gave me. And I got a great deal on this motorcycle. So, thank you for watching all the way through if you made it. A big thanks to you. 
If you want to see anything else, if you want any other content like this, let me know. I am going to try to make a video of what of these mods worked and what didn't after my trip to Alaska. So that will be coming in the future. Subscribe if you haven't already to keep up to date with that and watch out for that video in the future. This is an awesome motorcycle and there's going to be content coming for it. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next one.